I recently put out a poll asking for your non-medical questions that you would like me to answer. Some of them are much weirder than others, but I'm going to try and tackle them all in this video. Hi everyone, my name is Ollie. I'm a third year medical student studying on the graduate entry program at Warwick Medical School in the UK. So last week on my Instagram story, I put out a poll asking you guys to send in non-medical questions specifically. Sometimes I get a bit sick of answering purely medical questions and sometimes people just want to find out a bit more about me and my personal life. So let's start having a look at some of those. Pick a sport that you'd like to take up. Uh, that's difficult. Um, in terms of sports I've actively participated in, the only real significant one is squash. I played a lot when I was growing up and during my first degree, something I've really regrettably not done as much at Warwick. I'd really like to pick that back up. I do go running quite frequently just to, to kind of space out because I enjoy, you know, just listening to music and kind of zoning out for 40, 45 minutes going for a jog. In terms of picking up a new sport, um, I've only ever really played racket sports. Corf ball actually looks really quite good. I've done some photography uh, for my housemate who is president of the Corf ball club here and it looks, I don't know, sort of like a cross between basketball and netball is my estimation of it, but it actually looks really fun. So yeah, I guess something like Corf ball or ultimate frisbee or a bit of an out there sport. When was the last time you were truly happy? Uh, probably before I started medical school. Don't recommend. <laughs> Important question, favourite snack? Please, I am the only snack that anyone needs. Uh, that's really difficult. I have a bit of a sweet tooth. Right, at the moment, I'm just going to pick <laughs> one of two chocolate bars. Fight it out in the comments as to which is better. A Kinder Bueno, sometimes, because I really like the sort of hazelnut um, filling stuff. Or a Twix. I don't think you can really go wrong with a Twix. If we're thinking more sort of healthier snack, I really enjoy granola. Cashew nuts, actually, something savoury. Let's go cashew nuts. Apple and peanut butter. Lots of things. I'm a very snacky person. <laughs> Celebrity crush. Oh, that's really difficult. If you'd have asked, like, seven-year-old Ollie, um, he would have said Rachel Stevens from S Club 7. And I think 23-year-old Ollie will still say Rachel Stevens from S Club 7. Cats are better than dogs. Um, that's not really a question, Emma, that's a statement, but um, I don't know. I love both cats and dogs. Uh, home, we have both. When I grow up and have my own place, I want both. Can I have both? I think if I was living and working as a doctor, cat would probably be significantly easier because they're a bit lower maintenance. But then I think dog personalities tend to be totally different. I want both. I'm a golden retriever. I'm a bit basic. Why did you not come to the radiology event? Well, Jamie, it's because the speaker that I was there to see cancelled, so I didn't go. <laughs> I don't think that's controversial. Favourite board game? Um, the only time that I really play board games at home is we always tend to do it at Christmas, and when we do it's things like Monopoly, Articulate, Trivial Pursuit, things like that. But I do have a certain degree of appreciation for the sort of weird, obscure German board games. So Settlers of Catan, I absolutely love Makes and Breaks Friendships. <laughs> One that I also really enjoy, just for pure nostalgia kick reasons. When I was a kid, we used to have this, it was a Harry Potter, like, electronic one that you sort of had to assemble. It was really complicated, build it out of cardboard, and it covered, like, the entire Hogwarts castle. It was sort of like an adventure board game, so I really liked that. And then, just to mention, as another party game, I know it's not really a board game, hidden role games like Werewolf, Secret Hitler, I really like things like that. So big recommend if you've never tried those. And obviously D&D, &D, again, not a board game, but dice-based game. I play a lot of D&D &D every week, so got to put that in there as well. And then someone else has actually asked me, what's your favourite D&D spell? For those of you who don't know, um, Dungeons & Dragons is like a... Well, it is a role-playing game. I was going to say like a role-playing game, but it is one. So there's a lot of um, high fantasy magic elements. Think of it sort of like Lord of the Rings, if, if that's the closest point of reference you have. And my answer to that question is Greece, because what this spell does is it just covers an area of the floor in Greece and makes it highly likely that anyone who passes over this space will kind of fall down and be unable to get back up. It's something that I make sure my characters have access to every time, and every time it always does more damage to my own party than it does to whoever we're fighting against, which is really funny, so it's always Greece. What advice would you give to your younger self? Um, I think be able to spot the red flags in a relationship early. That's probably quite pragmatic advice. 
don't go out with people who are bad for you and you know are going to be bad for you. <laughs> piece of advice that I often give people is, is don't be afraid to take chances, but I think historically I have been quite good at that. So I will amend that slightly to say that nothing nothing is impossible. Don't think that anything is kind of beyond you at any given point because of your, your relative experience level. If you're determined to do something, you probably do have the capacity to make it happen. And I would just say on top of embracing whatever opportunities are available, don't be afraid of momentum and really try and push things as far as they can go because you'll be surprised at how far you can get and what you can achieve. And just as a general point, everything will work out all right one way or another. Don't get as stressed as you do all the time past Ollie. Although I still get stressed all the time. So what changes? What career path would you have chosen if you didn't go to medical school? That's really hard, but I am a believer in contingency planning. And so I did have backups for if I didn't get into medical school. One was a master's in neuroscience. I think if I was going to have become a pure scientist and not a clinician, neuroscience is what I really would have wanted to go into. I had also applied for the GDL, the graduate diploma in law um, at the time. And I had been accepted for a, a PhD at uh, Newcastle as part of a doctoral training partnership. And again, I've told the story in other videos, but they were really, really good. They accepted me, even though they knew that I ultimately wanted to go and do medicine. So I guess if I hadn't got in, I probably would have completed that. I think ultimately something people facing is what I've realized that I need. Rather than just pure science, I, I need to be engaged with people. So maybe something in science communication, I don't know. I still like to do that. What's your favorite type of bread? Now, these are the important questions. I'm partial to a good sourdough, thank you. Would you rather talk like Yoda or breathe like Darth Vader? I think what I would say is it's medically possible for me to breathe like Darth Vader if I smoke enough. So given that the talking like Yoda is something that I'd have to expend effort to do, I should probably take that one because it's the better bet. Make smart choices, kids. What's your favorite book? Oh, that's really hard because I have different answers to this based on, you know, what's a book you think that everyone should read, which is very different to what my favorite book is and so on and so forth. Um, what remains my favorite book purely because it's one of the ones that really turned me on to reading was Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. I must have been five or six when I read it and it was it was a slog at five or six. Um, I remember really getting frustrated with it because it was beyond my level then. The only reason that I kept trying is that I knew my dad liked it. <laughs> and obviously that's the age where you're like, well, my parents know everything. And if they think it's good, then it has to be good. So I need to keep reading it. <laughs> and not only did that kind of build my, my love for sort of fantasy fiction and, and fiction in general, I think it built my tolerance for getting through more difficult literature, which is something that as I've gotten older is really, really valuable. And it shaped the sort of books that I enjoy now. Just a couple of books that I think everyone should read. I talk about these all the time. The Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solzhenitsyn in the in communist Russia. Political prisoners were kept in these internment camps under horrible conditions. And then another one is Ordinary Men. And it's it follows this police battalion in Nazi Germany and it shows how their mindset kind of devolves over time and the horrific things that the Nazis did became tolerable to ordinary men. And it's just a kind of grim insight into the human psyche. I really, really recommend those two books. And Lord of the Rings, obviously. <laughs> what do you do in your spare time? I don't have an awful lot of spare time. Um, or if I do, I tend to spend it either working on my own projects, so that's research. Obviously, I like to do these videos, which take up a lot of time, more time than I think people necessarily understand. I love to read, listen to music, play my own music. I've got a couple of guitars. So over there, I, I make sure that I learn songs fairly consistently just to keep my skills up. And then obviously just things like drawing. Um, I'm a bit of a maker, so I enjoy messing about with electronics and Raspberry Pi coding and things like that. I, I like to try and keep a balanced skill set where I can. How was the getting into medical school process? It, it's terrible. Like, honestly, it's awful. Um, I think whether you go as as a school leaver at 18 or you go as a graduate entrant, it's not fun because you, you're 
you have to think about it so far in advance. You're, you're always working like a year and a half, two years ahead, because you've got to get the experience, you've got to prep for the entry exams, you've got to pay for them. You've then got to get to an interview, which is one of the most stressful things in the world. And then you know the competition ratios, you're 10 to one at undergrad or 20, 25, 30 to one for grad entry. Then you've got the waiting game after the interview, which you know, recently I've been talking to so many of you through this process. There's just so much uncertainty involved. And, you know, I, I could be preachy about that and be like, you know, keep your chin up and everything will work out okay in the end, which I know I've said obviously in this video. The thing is it realistically might not, you know, some people take loads of goes and some people don't get in. That's just the way the dice fall. And I think it's important to be realistic about these things. And would I tell, you know, my past self to be less stressed? Yes, as I just did. But if I went back in time and did it all again, would I be as stressed as I was? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's it's a really grueling process that puts you through your paces. Like, does it suck? Yeah, it's, it's really terrible to go through. It's not fun. But would I go through it again to get to medical school? Yeah, of course I would. I love being here. ASL. Well, I suppose 23 male and former sins Coventry. I've not seen that one in quite a long time. <laughs> Throwback to MSN Messenger. Well, that's where we're going to wrap this one, guys. Thank you for sending in your questions. It's always fun to know what weird things you guys want to ask. Do you object to anything I've said? Let me know in the comments. Do you have any more questions for a future video? Again, let me know. I'll read them all. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time. If you'd like to support the channel, there are three ways you can do it. The first is to like, share, comment, and subscribe. The second is you can buy me a coffee at my Ko-Fi link in the description below. The third is using my referral link to save 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favorite 3D anatomy learning tool. I'll get a small kickback when you sign up using that link and they'll know that I sent you. Take care guys and I'll see you next time.